Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Rogue Trader with me, Bring It Down. Let's go ahead and collect our spoils from the previous battle. Miraculous Fusion Reactor. Always keep your eye on the price. Let us not dawdle. Avenger Gauntlets. All attacks of opportunity deal an additional agility bonus damage. Blasphemous Prism. A glass prism crafted by the cultists of the Final Dawn. It belonged to their leader, Aurora. If you look through it long enough, your vision begins to deceive your mind. Show you what could be instead of what is. And Gem of Dark Vitality. Powers Conviction Heretical, plus 4 maximum wounds. When Veil Degradation is above 15, plus 10 to toughness. Each round the wearer it regenerates wounds equal to wearer's heretical rank. Well, the only person that can wear that is Adira. Keep your wits about you. Those to Heinrichs for now. I always keep my options open. The hollow hollowed electrodynamic synobium greets its savior. It's what I do. I guess we're good to leave. I always have a backup plan. Rogue trader, I was somewhat brusque at our first meeting, and I would like to make up for it by expressing my thanks for your assistance in the electrodynamic synobium. Your arrival could not have come at a better time. The interrogator offers a scant bow. Thanks to you, I have succeeded in finding the object that brought me to this system in the first place. Now that the weapon of corruption has been seized from the cult, I can satisfy the Lord Inquisitor's wish and travel with you to Footfall, once you have finished your business on Rykat. There is one more thing. The Lord Inquisitor gave me this item some time ago. He must have thought it likely that I would find myself aboard this vessel sooner than he. I was instructed to deliver this device to Lady Theodora. However, given recent events, I believe I ought to present it to you. 
This is an elucidator, a sacred machine capable of translating the languages of remote and lost worlds into low Gothic. It can even process Xenos languages to a certain degree. Not without infelicities, but possibly well. Hadrix reveals a small device wrapped in velvet. A thank you. The Inquisition's generosity is greatly appreciated. May the Elucidator serve House Fon Valancius as faithfully as it has served the acolytes of the Holy Ordos up to now. What do you plan to do now? I would like to offer my assistance in resolving your immediate problems. I am aware that the ship suffered considerable losses during the recent mutiny and was damaged by the cultists' actions, and you have lost many valuable officers as well. You are in a difficult situation. I am at your disposal. But what do you think will become of the electrodynamic synobium? It all depends on the electro priests who survived the attack. Fortunately for them, the cultists did not manage to seriously corrupt the holy site, partly thanks to the priesthood's efforts. Nevertheless, I would not be surprised if the local explorator fleet decides to audit and purge the damaged units once it hears about what has happened. I must return to my duties. Hadrix is about to say something else when he is interrupted by the sound of a Vox signal. Someone is trying to contact you. Thank you for your time. Please consider me at your complete disposal while I am aboard your vessel. Congratulations on the victory, your lordship. The entire vessel was impatiently awaiting the news of your expedition's success. The rumors about you not simply saving the Tech Priest Monastery, but actually eliminating the source of the mutiny or spreading like wildfire. The Vox transmissions from across the world speak of nothing else. Governor Medina is expecting you at his command center to discuss matters. We're ready to depart immediately. Just give the order. Let's go talk to our new companion first. Heinrich looks at you intently, his head tilted. I know nothing about you, Heinrichs. Can you tell me a little about yourself? <laughs> I'm usually the one interested in the pasts of those around me. Not the reverse. I come from a night world, Guizorn III. I belong to a branch of one of the noble houses until my exceptional abilities were discovered. After that, I was sent on a black ship to Holy Terror, where I was trained and I began my service for the glory of the Imperium. Heinrich's face is momentarily split by a sarcastic grin. Yeah, black ships are nasty business. They're run by the Inquisition, they go around and they collect psychers from worlds all across the Imperium. And basically get tested. If you aren't a psyker worth keeping alive, you get fed to the Emperor. What does this description actually say? The dreadful Imperial void ships that transport psychers given up by numerous worlds as part of their tithe to the Imperium. Yeah, that does not do the black ships justice. They are terrifying. Do you remember your home planet? I do, but I have no ties to my home world now. None except my first name. I left Guizorn III when I was still a child. My family disowned me, stripping me of my family name. I was given a new one by those who trained me. Even for a noble, being branded a psyker is a mark of eternal shame. I experienced that firsthand before I was put on the black ship. Heinrich's mouth turns down. Which is ironic considering the Emperor is a Psyker and everybody worships him. How did you discover your abilities? Like many Psykers unaware of their curse, I found out when a strong emotional reaction triggered an involuntary response. <sighs> My great aunt had a pet Grink. One day, it bit me, and I boiled it from inside out. And when my great aunt slapped me for what I'd done, I boiled her too. Heinrich falls silent, then he sighs and reluctantly continues. The interrogator looks away and adds more quietly. 
The sorcerer's powers are truly dangerous. Hope you've mastered your abilities since then. When I arrived on Holy Terror and was tested, I was found to be suitable material for becoming a sanctioned psyker, able to bend his curse to his own will. I can assure you that the adepts of the Astra Telepathica were right in their assessment. Tell me about the black ship. Picture a vast prison ship filled with frightened, angry psychers who can't control their abilities and who have just lost their homes and their families. Some of them were children and adolescents like I was. Some were monstrous creatures who no longer had the right to be called human or psychopaths who reveled in their impure powers. Heinrich is silent for so long, you begin to think that an answer will not be forthcoming. Once, when one of the miscreants broke free, those in command simply depressurized the bay and got rid of the culprit, along with the prisoners and crew tainted by him. But even after that, I heard the echo of inhuman suffering and terror that filled that part of the ship. It grieves me to recall that episode to this day. You were sent to the Inquisition straight after training. <laughs> no. First, I was accorded the status of a Psyker fit for service in the Imperial Guard, where I then spent several years. It was only afterward that I became an agent of the Golden Throne. Heinrich stops there, clearly not intending to elaborate further. Let's talk about something else. Heinrich nods word wordlessly. I could say that. How long have you served in the Inquisition? Since the day of my initiation as an acolyte. So, decades. How many real years it's been, it's hard to say. When I return from a journey through the warp, I often discover that much more or much less time has passed in real space. Heinrich shrugs. You visited many worlds in your service, I wager. Indeed. I have visited many of the places brought to the Emperor's light and those sullied by the filth of the arch enemy. In truth, even after all these years spent visiting the various corners of the Imperium and looking beyond its borders, I still consider the Segmentum Solar to be the greatest of all humanity's bastions. Nothing compares to the majesty of holy terror, the might of Mars, the grandeur of the Segment's other worlds. What duties have you been carrying out for the Inquisitor? You can't really be expecting me to answer that question, can you? The interrogator returns your look and smiles, but thanks to the expression in his ice-cold eyes, the effect is rather unnerving. For someone who's been in service for decades, you certainly look young. That's because he's a biomancer, and you can manipulate your own biology as a biomancer. The first step for biomancers such as myself is to take control of the processes of their own body, including aging. <laughs> I've endured innumerable hazards in my work. If I allowed every trace of them to remain, I would look completely different today. Heinrich smiles crookedly. Let's change the subject. Gladly. You're not the Inquisitor's only acolyte, correct? <laughs> Of course not. The Lord Inquisitor's entourage comprises dozens of people. The best of the best. Experts in various fields and disciplines. Some of them I know personally. Others I have never met. To be honest, I'm not even certain that the people I know are still alive. I used to work with other acolytes of the Lord Inquisitor, but in the Coronas Expanse, I have been working alone. I don't Heinrich's expression becomes pensive. He seems to look through you to something beyond. Well, wandering among the stars without family or friends, don't you get lonely? I rarely have the time or the opportunity to think about it. Heinrich shrugs vaguely. If you're an interrogator, does that mean you hold a special position in the retinue? <laughs> we are not a retinue. We are acolytes. As for your question, I am closer than anyone else to the one I call my personal teacher. The Lord Inquisitor, 
deemed me worthy of undertaking the most important and sensitive tasks requiring the attention of agents of the Golden Throne. Are there other acolytes in the Coronas Expanse? The interrogator narrows his eyes at you and releases a disappointed sigh. After several seconds of silence, you realize that you will not be getting an answer. Let's talk about something else. Such as? What can you do as a psyker? The Lord Inquisitor was most insistent that I master the discipline of Santic Demonology. I use my faith and my power to crush the enemies of the Imperium. Servants of Chaos tremble at the sound of the Emperor's name uttered by my lips. I am also a skilled biomancer. I can manipulate bodily processes. Sometimes... Sometimes I resort to those skills in the course of my work, when it is necessary to make the subject of an interrogation more cooperative. I'm curious how option 5 would play out, because we're under orders to take him to footfall. It may just remove him from my party. But he'll stay on the ship until we make it to footfall. I must take my leave. Heinrich politely inclines his head in response. Alright, let's grab these fire grenades and Numa boots. Using the charge ability costs one less AP. Let's go ahead and level up Adira, so she gets a talent and a characteristic. Uh, let's go ahead and boost her Psy rating, I think. Actually, Second Sight might be worth it with her... Specifically with her uh, Chain Lightning. Because there's been a few instances where I try to use it, but it's too close to my allies. But if I hit an enemy behind, like in the back row, it could arc to other enemies and not my ally. I'm going to grab Second Sight. Now, the Psycho Psychic Powers that have a range of two cells or more have their range increased by plus five. And here, probably Willpower. Odd that Intelligence is recommended. I guess because some of the... Um, Operator talents scale with intelligence. Alright, she can have that. And as for the boots. I would give them to him. Head over here before we go to Rakad Manoris because we have a ship we can check out.
Unidentified void ship. Augurs notice a large object among the lifeless rocks covering the planet. A void ship, whose signature and origin are impossible to identify from orbit, is resting on the edge of a deep ravine. The hull of the unidentified vessel is severely damaged. Rocks around it shattered by the force of the gigantic machine's crash landing. The Augurs haven't detected any vital signs aboard or near the vessel. Send a squad to the planet to explore the void ship. The landing party reports via Vox as soon as they touch down. The colossal void ship before them is covered with spikes. It resembles a morbid beast sculpted from darkness itself, menacingly hanging over the ravine. An experienced veteran accurately determines the origin of the unholy vessel. It belongs to the Xenos race called Drukhari. Ready to collapse at any moment, the void ship emits a long, willful creak, as if promising to drag along into the abyss below anyone who dares to disturb its slumber. So I guarantee there's still Drukhari aboard this ship. They may follow our people back into the ship, because they can be pretty stealthy. Um... We could just blow it up. I don't want to miss out on loot though, but we can always check it out in another playthrough. So I think for this one, I'm going to stick to the tenets of the Imperial Faith. Yeah, being the God Emperor's chosen, the Rogue Trader won't go digging around Xeno's trash. The artifacts of the enemies of humanity should be wiped from the crypt. Well, shoot, maybe we should find out why they're here though. So not necessarily using their technology. Hmm, tough call. I'm gonna go with option five. Being the God Emperor's chosen, the rogue trader won't go digging around Xeno's trash. The artifacts of the enemies of humanity should be wiped from the Kronos Expanse. When the landing party shuttle exits the atmosphere of Rykad Majoris, the rogue trader's flagship fires a salvo at the ravine and the void ship perched atop it. Rocks engulfed in the scarlet blazes of the explosion look like a bloodstain sprawling out on the gray, lifeless face of the planet. The holy flame blessed by the Emperor himself has melted away the abominable void ship once and for all. I'm sure we missed out on something there. Oh, we can do it again? Okay, um... Argenta eagerly says that the only good Xenos is a dead one? A true servant of the Emperor shouldn't soil their hands with Xeno's technology. Am I getting more experience for doing this? Let me exit and see if we can, uh... See what happens. Yeah, we can keep doing it. Uh, I mean, why not go to explore everything if it's letting me? Uh, Ablar suggests finding out what the Xenos were doing in the Rykad system. See, I don't, I don't know. I don't feel right about doing this. But it's there. That's ah, We'll explore all the options. Uh, Ablar suggests finding out what the Xenos were doing in the Rykad system. Taking heed of the Seneschal's recommendations. The Rogue Trader orders to send more people to the planet. After two watches of hard labor, 
The workers managed to stabilize the Drukari void ship. The soldiers who entered the vessel were met with lifeless bodies of Xenos who had died when the void ship crashed. The void ship itself, following its abominable nature, came to life, immediately craving to sate its wicked appetite for human death. The vessel systems have reacted to the intruders, and senselessly cruel, deadly traps have been activated on all decks. Monstrous contraptions designed to mince, rip apart, and incinerate their victims took the soldiers by surprise, but were neutralized before the squad suffered significant losses. The soldiers found several curious pieces of Xenotech on the sinister void ship, but no data that could shed some light on why it came to the Rykad system. Oh, we got a piercing splinter cannon. And the rest of these are cargo. Oh, now I can't do it again. That's odd. Yeah, alright, that was odd. And I think I did get experience each time we did that. I think we leveled up on the first one, so I'm... Can't verify. Well, a little suspension of roleplay there because of the uh, unique circumstance. We were able to visit the ship after we exploded it. Alright, uh, main character gets a characteristic and a common talent. I... Willpower is probably the optimal choice since a lot of the officer talents scale with that. I'm going to with toughness though because I do plan on being a frontline character. And then here, My go with dual weapon combat. So I do plan on having a melee and ranged weapon equipped at all times. Abelard will eventually just go to a two-handed melee weapon. Though, probably not the axe that we have. I'm going to do Dueling Mastery, since I do plan on being on the front line. So it grants a plus 15 bonus to parry. Like, 15% bonus to parry. Did we level up twice? Oh, is it from... Oh, whoops. <laughs> Alright, so maybe I clicked on that ship too many times. Alright, another upgrade for Finest Hour. Are these all new? Or is it... Same list of upgrades as before. I right, see. So yeah, we have the fourth one. So target gains temporary wounds until the end of combat. During their turn, the target deals bonus damage until the end of combat. The target gains the effective voice of command. I'm gonna go with that one. The target of finest hour gains more bonuses during their extra turn. The target deals bonus damage. To the end of combat, the target gains the effect of Voice of Command. Can't go wrong with that. And then for Adira, she gets a characteristic and a common talent. Intelligence and... A psi rating. And that's what I use the common talents for. To boost that.
Um, I'm gonna have her focus more on the AOE stuff. So dismantling attack also intimidates all enemies in a five cell radius around the target, reducing their dodge and armor by 15% until the end of combat. All right, Cassia, a characteristic and a talent. We go with perception and. Probably unnatural allure, since she's an officer, she scales with fellowship. The navigator gains pl well, uh, so many options here. I kinda looked through them all again. I may as well use Pass Unscathed, right? There's a lot of good options here. Let's do a natural allure because it synchronizes well with the officer class. Navigator gains plus five to fellowship and additional plus one to fellowship for every navigator talent and or navigator power taken. And here I'm going to lean into... I don't know, option four just seems like the best one. Well, maybe I'll have her more as the... Uh, support... Officer, I mean, they both support classes, um, main character and her, but just to mix it up. So main character has upgrade one and four. I'll give her two and three. So upgrade two, the target of finest hour gains more bonuses. All negative effects are immediately removed from the target. Until the end of the officer's next turn, the target cannot die. Its wounds cannot be reduced below one. And Argenta gets a common talent and a skill. Honestly, swift movements might be worth it. Just trying to position with the flamer could be a little bit of a hassle. Uh, Noto Heresy might be worth it. We don't use her for Lore Xenos or Lore Warp checks anyway and also buffs all of her allies so imperial world characters gain plus 10 percent critical hit chance and 10 percent armor against xenos or demonic creatures the allies gain half the bonuses of no no heresy so five percent however imperial world characters lore xenos and lore warp are always zero which is probably fine but again swift movements might be worth it as well but i'm gonna go with what i've got and then awareness. Okay, so. We have option four, though it's not highlighted. So that will go with the uh, upgrade three. Till the end of combat, all the soldiers' attacks are 20% harder to dodge. Till the end of combat, the soldiers' ranged attacks gain plus 10% armor penetration. Alright, Abelard gets a characteristic and a talent. A strength, of course, and... Maybe Nimble? He has the tank, so why not lean into that? Yeah, we'll go with a plus 10% chance to dodge. I 
I might... I don't know, I think option four is probably better. I'm gonna give that to Heinrichs for sure. Let's do upgrade two. Well, it's for each kill though. He may not be doing a lot of killing. I don't know if he's really... I mean, option four, I think is the best one, but I don't wanna have two characters with the same upgrades, if that makes sense. So it may not be optimal. I think I'm going to go with option one. A Daring Breach also grants plus 10 movement points until the end of the turn. The warrior does not provoke attacks of opportunity this turn. Heinrichs, characteristic, and a common talent. Uh, we'll go with toughness. Is there a force weapon? You do heavy armor proficiency. Uh, actually, I might get that for Abelard in the future, so maybe not on Heinrichs. Oh, uh, that seems pretty good. Might do Edge of Dawn. That sounds a little heretical since we're dealing with the final dawn and all of that. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So Edge of Dawn, enemies adjacent to the Psyker suffer 10% more damage. And then, uh, oh, he already has this one. So this turn, melee attacks deal additional 2 damage. And he's going to be doing a lot of killing as a damage dealer, so I think option 2 is better. So the end of combat, the warrior gains plus 4 MP for each kill, and may use their MP after attacking or using abilities. That should give him a ton of momentum. All right, we're all upgraded. Uh, next time, we'll head towards Governor Medina and let him know how things went at the uh, Cenobium. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.